But let's start with all that rain we had, the impact it had on roads and bridges and other infrastructure. Um, some areas had, they said, close to 10 inches. How much damage was done to the county and is there still working on repairs in some areas? We've got just about every road back open. Yes, we had severe damage. When you continuously have 100 year floods in the space of a year, you're going to have damage. And there are some areas we're already doing pre-engineering. We're going to have to replace some bridges and replace them for the simple fact that they're going to have to be higher. As you know, we've done one, and so we know that we're looking at doing two, especially around Scotts Ferry and Shackleburg, because, I mean, I've been out there when there really was no way for those people to get in and out. So that work has begun, but it didn't begin just because of this. We know that's a problem area. What's with that area? It's just, I mean, it has low spots, and it has a lot of water, there are a lot of hills and there are a lot of houses over there. And while we have stormwater regulations, you know, stormwater regulations work. And we have council people now looking to increase stormwater regulations because they were built before monsoons occurred in this area. I mean, in some areas of the county, within 24 hours, we had 10 inches of rain. What do you do with 10 inches of rain other than build an arc? And so, but we think this is going to continue. The way I look at it, it quit raining out west, and all the water they used to get, it rains in the east now. Well, are y'all checking all the bridges in the county again? Absolutely. And, and but we have a lot of the in house bridge repair too, right? Well, yeah, we build our own bridges because we know how to do it. We can do it uh, really good, and we can do it for a lot less money than putting it out to a contractor. What does that do to the budgets? I mean, it's already tight on roads and stuff like that. How does these kind of events affect the budget? Oh, they affect the budget, but what we're hoping with some of the uh, federal money that has been already allocated and the possibility of more, and a lot of that is going to be for roads and bridges because roads and bridges across the country are deteriorating and they're big ticket items. So we're hoping and positioning ourselves to grab that money the first day it opens. Not, well, we're thinking, we're getting ready, we're pondering about doing that. We need to have plans. Boom, let's go. And hopefully we can get Anderson County's fair share. We'll really always like to get more than Anderson County's fair share, and we're pretty good at doing that. This week, County Council approved ATAX funding for a number of organizations around the county and declined to fund some of the others. Can you remind people how this selection process works? Council appoints a committee of citizens. Our staff makes a recommendation to that committee. That committee can say yes, no, change this, increase that, or we don't want to do that at all. After the committee of citizens votes, then it goes to county council, where they also have the chance to change, modify, or redo. And so that's how it is. It's really a three-step process. And those checks will go out next to Wednesday. But there's very specific things that money can be used for, right? Because some people apply for the wrong thing, that's why they don't get money. Well, their, their criteria and their strict criteria, and you have to fit into that, that area to get money. And sometimes you say, well, that seems right. No, it doesn't, it doesn't hit, that, hit that level right there. But some people actually ask for money that's not in the criteria. And oh yeah, and they get turned down, but then we try to explain that what you requested doesn't meet what this money can be used for. Uh, Kid Venture and Green Pond seem to be the biggest beneficiaries. Uh, Kid Venture, hopefully, we're going to have final plans on Kid Venture here shortly because we would like to do something in the spring. I'm talking about playing in the spring. So that ATAX money is really, impo ATAX money is really important. ATAX money is really important, but you should also know that because of our tourism activities with Green Pond and other things, our ATAX money is growing in size. And that ATAX, which is on hotels where people stay, we plow that back into things that will bring more people here. And so that's, it's just almost like the better you do with your ATAX, the more your ATAX is going to grow, so the more things that you can do. Well, Glenn Brill mentioned the economic impact next year could top $50 million. Easily. Only half that amount is coming from Green Pond. Um, to what do you credit this increase? Well, we're going to host the Dixie Youth World Series here. We're going to do the state tournament here. That's going to bring in tons and tons of people because, as I like to say, the events that bring in mom, dad, grandmama, granddaddy, and all the kids and the nephews and the uncles, that's where the bread and butter is. Sports, 
uh, tourism is where the big money is. That's where it is because all of these people come to see little Johnny or little Sally play play their sport. So that's going to be big. They're going to have some wonderful tournaments at the Parker Bowie Complex and that's going to bring in a whole lot of people from other places. That's going to go on. Plus our usual festivals. You know we're going to have the Bass Master Classic at the end of February. They were here this week. They hadn't seen the new uh, amphitheater or the new dock they went crazy so we're pretty sure that we're going to continue to get more than our share of Bassmaster events we just signed up a Bassmaster collegiate event and so there's just a whole lot of things going on then we also have Clemson football coming back in there are a whole lot of things that are going to cause us to go over 50 I know we're going to go over 50 the new cross-country facility out on 81 North. Which is a great thing. The county's participating by waiving some fees for the sewer that's going to be out there. But that's also going to be a destination place for events because that's going to be it's going to be world class. And we're excited to have a small part on that. And we may have a little larger part of, on that to make sure that happens. Uh, the county also just opened a new ADA access point with a dock and kayak launch in Belton, which the city of Belton named after Senator Mike Gambrell, who grew up on that water. Yes. Uh, is the growth of these access points on the Saluda River part of the equation of bringing more visitors in? It absolutely is. We have been working almost going on 13 years now since, since I came back this time, is to develop that Saluda River, that blue trail. And it is getting a lot of use. I mean, we have a company now that will put you in and take you out of the Saluda River. That didn't exist. We're working with developers who are looking to do big things on the Saluda River that they're going to do because of the river and because of the increased use of the river. And so we're going to continue to put money towards that and build that up because that's just a great, a water feature is a wonderful thing to have and we're going to exploit it but also maintain it environmentally. Cities and towns across the county are also bringing back all their festivals and events and um, from they had a lot of new events as well from Celebrate Anderson, Spring Jubilee in Pendleton, Spring Water Fest in Williamson, Standpipe in Belton, Depot Days in Iowa, the Chili Cook-Off and that never-ending series of events in West Pelzer on the strip highway over there and then next year's promised return of the soiree. The county seems to just be loaded with activity. Does the county itself have any new events in mind for the year ahead? We're looking at some uh, new events out at the Civic Center. We're also looking at some events out at Green Pond to increase the uh, public's knowledge that Green Pond A is the world's premier fishing facility, but it's also a park where you can go and walk and enjoy the view. You can walk out on the dock, you can carry a cane pole and fish, or you can just walk around. You can have a good time. The views are great. It doesn't cost anything. and so. You know, we're trying to add more things like that. The amphitheater is now completed except for some minor things. Looking to have a concert there. We're looking to encourage other people to have concerts there. I would really like to see a play out there, which I think would be a great setting. Those are the things that we're trying to do. And uh, also increase and do some more work out at the Civic Center. We're working on Dolly Cooper right now. Uh, the thing I'm particularly excited about is that our uh, new project in Humland Park to promote soccer and basketball and other sorts. They're under construction right now. Uh, we had the opening of the Anderson Paws Dog Park and Event Center, which I can't stress enough that you can go out there and take your dog, you can go take yourself, you can go to the amphitheater. There's a whole lot of things that you can do there and that is now open and the public should take advantage of it and that is in an area where it might have been a recreation desert but now there's something going on over there so we're real happy about that. And what could be one of the biggest news stories of the year, the old Equinox Mill property has been purchased by M. Peters Group and slated for cleanup. They seem to be purchased. We've had a first reading. We have to have two more readings. Right. But it, barring some really strange... Yes. Because um, they're already poking around out there to see what they need to yes, do. Yes, they are. Uh, why was this group chosen? Is there a similar project track record? Correct? They're doing the development up in Newry. They are well financed. They have a great track record. We put it out for the public to bid on. Uh, they were the only ones who decided to do that because that's really their area of expertise. As you know right now, there's an old water tower with the bottom out of it over there and 8,000 tons of bricks. The people who had it before trashed it. 
They took everything valuable and sold it like they always do. And it's an LLC. There's nobody to sue because they have no assets. So we paid that crook $50,000, which was cheaper than going to court. And now we're going to sell it and make about $30,000 profit. But that is wonderful, good expense for the taxpayer. But they're going to put apartments and townhomes and they're going to put a park over there and it's going to be some beautiful retail, and they'll have some retail over there and if you notice in that neighborhood there's some people moving in that neighborhood now and fixing up some of those houses right now and i know that because i rode through all those streets yesterday and i think this would pop that even more anchor that side and I know that there are other people looking at doing some mill development in Anderson County, and I think that's going to show the way. But also, we're trying to carry groups to Honeypath, carrying groups to Pendleton, in the old Pendleton oil mill, mm -hmm. and we've been successful in helping people in Pelzer, very helpful there and help them every way we could and that's going to come to fruition but we want every old mill site to be turned into something productive Sorry. we're ahead of the game if they just clean it up but to clean it up themselves and to put all this development there is a wonderful thing and a private entity can do it far cheaper than a, a you guys could they do can it. do it a lot quicker and for less money and they can run and they're going to run because they're not doing this because this is a public service they're going to make money and that's good we want them to make money and we want to have that cleaned up so it's the best of both worlds you mentioned pelzer they're doing some already repurposing that historic mill site with housing and retail and a senior citizen and all kinds of stuff and restaurant restaurant that's right restaurant from uh somebody from new york city yep. that has a well, well they have a restaurant in New York City, right. but they're going to open one in Pelzer, in the old Pelzer office building. Right. It's going to be great. And then Pendleton had not decided what they're going to do over the year, but that's been an eyesore forever down there. But now there is a company, a private company, tearing the old oil mill down. Right. And so there's actually something happening there. That's the there. most organized deconstruction I've ever seen. They're, I'm telling I you. I mean, they're, they're packing everything up tightly in trucks. I mean, they're not wasting anything. This is left. not the first time they've done this. Right. They have it down to a science. I mean, walking trails are a keen part of any of the town plans. Is there any progress on the trail between Pendleton, Anderson, Clemson, that thing? We're still waiting to have that meeting with those two towns. I know the mayor of Clemson's very interested in it. I know the city of Anderson's interested in it. We're interested in the city of Anderson developing their trail program in the city, which I know they're going to do great and wonderful things, and they already are doing it. But the uh, connector trail to the Civic Center into 81, if you go to the uh, movie theater out there, you can see where they're building that bridge, and you can that's see... That's what's taking so much time. That and bridge. that bridge is taking a whole lot of time. But that's on track, and they, that's going to be wonderful. They've actually cut in a tiny little piece of gravel on the other end. That's yes. anything else over the end. Yes. But, well, will, will that connect to the city trails, too, when it's Yes. Finished? So you'll be able to really get all over the city while You'll walking be able in. to go everywhere, anywhere. And you, you touched on these earlier, but what are the update on projects at Dolly Cooper and Wellington Park? Well, Wellington right now, they're down there right now putting in that soccer slash basketball facility. And it's going to be wonderful. And a young man here in Anderson spearheaded this. It was his idea. He brought it to us. We jumped in, got some grant money, and we think it's going to be a wonderful project in that area. But you have a lot going on in Humland Park. We tore down the last structure on the Viva site yesterday and we're hauling that away. What used to be a mound of nasty, dirty, filthy mosquito tires, if you go down there, it looks like a pretty field. And now when we tear that building down and get that gone, it will just be a very pretty place which will never be developed for anything. We're just gonna leave it just like that. The county participated in helping develop the uh, fire department in essence we did a lot of paving and grading down there the county also went down there and did the tree removal and everything for the new homeland park water department we have also worked with the homeland park fire department to help them attract private money to help them do what they're doing and so we have a lot of things going on in the Homeland Park area and we will continue to have more things going on in the Homeland Park area. We're doing demolition right now. As a matter of fact, we're tearing two houses down in Honey of Path today. Then they will be moving into this area around the Anderson area, but it's really countywide doing demolition. And as I know people are tired of me saying, 
but people love us to d demolish houses better than they like anything else the county does. That's a long, slow process, though, isn't it? It is, because if it, if it has asbestos, you have to test for asbestos, then you have to have it removed, and they've just tightened the rules down on how you do it, and I think that's all good, but we were knocking them out for $2,500 a piece. We're not knocking them out for $2,500 a piece, and there's always a backlog of structures that we are trying to tear down. Let's go back over to where we were talking about Equinox. We did some selective demolition over there and it has worked wonderfully well. Now we're trying to find good quality developers to go into some of those lots that we own to get them to build something new and affordable over there. But we're working with a lot of different groups on housing in Anderson County because as we talked last time, the average cost of a one bedroom apartment in Anderson's $1,400. That's one bedroom, $1,400 a month. Even though our wages are going up, we're around $21 an hour. And I'm hoping that today is Thursday that I'll have an announcement. Anderson County will have an announcement. Council will have an announcement of 500 new jobs today. I'm hoping that comes out today. It would be wonderful and amazing. But, you know, we've had a bunch of announcements in the last week. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, the new airport terminal was also met with news of a new charter air service. Yes. Uh, for the first time in a long, long time we've yes. got that. Why is that important to the Anderson Regional Airport? If you want to go somewhere, you can go out there and get that charter and go where you want to go. Before that, no. You had to go to another airport. And that fellow moved here. He moved from the Clemson Airport. He loves it. So now we have charter flight service there, which is wonderful. We have a private mechanic doing aviation-related repairs. We have a jam up flight school out there, which is going great guns. And we have some other exciting developments that are gonna take place out there. That airport has never functioned this well, and it's gonna to continue to grow and continue to bring more people and more business into Anderson County. But that charter was big. And also Dr. Hunt is the doctor, you can get your flight physical out there, all at the brand new Anderson County Airport Terminal. All these events we're talking about, an up-to-date airport, improving our parks, walking trails, cleaning up at these old mill sites, ADA accessibility and facilities, uh, how, how does that help when you guys go out to do economic development? Nobody want, wants to live in a bad, horrible place. They just don't. They want something to do. They want something to do. And, I mean, what going on downtown with the new brewery opening up there and the plaza project they're doing that makes everything easier because people want to go where they can have fun and and have recreation opportunities we've already talked about we can't build pickleball courts fast enough we're currently looking at hurricane springs to put a pickleball court there uh, we've got those at the civic center we provided some assistance but town of williamston did it with their pickleball courts and other, pl other places in the county are looking to do it. Other towns are looking to do it. So all of that adds to the quality of life. In these days, quality of life. We don't need anybody who wants to come in here and pay no money and not provide anything for the citizens. That, that's, that doesn't make any sense. And we don't have to do that anymore. We can be selective and picky because they want to come here. And also notice the county is assisting with a lot of job fairs to try to help fill these positions. Absolutely. We have a job fair going on today. We'll have continue to have job fairs. Again, thank Terry Gilstrap for inventing the drive through job fair when we had COVID. But we continue to do that. And I, pe people don't want to hear it. But after a, co a company comes here, we stay with them day in, day out, and we'd love nothing better to help homegrown companies, but we want to help our new friends because a lot of them have been here so long now, people think they're homegrown companies. But it's important for us to work with them to help them. And our new Uber project is, is about to get underway where we will provide a ride to get you back and forth. If somebody offers you a job, we will guarantee you that we, you can get you there for two weeks, maybe even longer. But we're trying to be innovative and do things that haven't been done. And, and that workforce will develop people who can then get their own cars and provide, I mean, it's a developmental thing, it's not it's just a, de a ride. It's a developmental thing and it's not a giveaway. If you don't have a car and you can't get to a good job, you're not going to the job. Especially shift workers. Especially shift workers. Can't catch you can't, the bus. You can't, run, you can't have 75,000 buses individually going to each place. On the QRV side, it has been going wonderfully well. Our subcontractor priority, they're doing well. Are there bumps and hurdles? But right now, we're so far ahead of where I thought we would be. And we have 
really good really good response times and we're provi providing really good care and uh, council monitors that situation almost daily I mean they, they're watching it daily and so so far so good but we want to have the best and I can already tell you that other counties are look, coming to us to say what what, what are y'all doing why'd y'all think of that how's this working out so I think it's good but those are QRVs with the ANMED colors, they're very distinctive, you can see those, and this paramedic in there, you know, there are three levels, there's there's a EMT, EMTA, and paramedics, and those people are county employees, and they are dedicated, and they're working well. We're about to open, hopefully next week, have the grand opening of the new Townville station right there at the interstate, where the majority of the calls come in, so we're excited about that. Has the county figured out how to spend the 39 million from the American Rescue Act, uh, how, what they can use it for? What we're hoping to do is spend a lot of that on infrastructure that will pay dividends for, for the future. And like running a sewer line to exit 14 and taking care of some problems that we have. But not only are we going to take care of those because it's going to create economic opportunity, but it's also going to clean up the environment. People never remember that. They say, well, you're putting in a sewer line. Yeah and we're reducing the number of septic tanks. And on exit 14, we're begin knocking out a bunch of old dilapidated sewer treatment plants that are going into Lake Hartwell. So it's good for economic development, it's good for the environment, and so that's what we're trying to do. And that's what council's pushing us to do. Will some of it be used for broadband maybe issues? Oh, we, we, we are working on broadband every day. It's not going as fast as we would like it, but they're about to unleash tons of money. We're gonna be having another meeting. The county is authorized to study to tell us where we have broadband. And, you know, some areas they say you have broadband, you don't have broadband. And a lot of that is gamesmanship on major players. We're hooking our star to a large degree working with Western Carolina Telephone and Blue Ridge Electric because they are going to be providing service in their service areas. And council is very strong on broadband. They want us to do this. We've met with all the superintendents, and as soon as that money starts trickling down, and it's a lot of money, and a lot of it's gonna go directly to the broadband providers, but in some cases, we're gonna to have to kinda of help them out a little bit with some of this stimulus money. But also, we have received a grant, which we're hoping to put the final touches on to increase broadband in the La France area. And we just need some more signatures from citizens, so we're working on that. Well, the first question people ask when they start to buy a house is, does it have broadband? And you better be careful when they tell you it has broadband. Absolutely. Because it may very well have broadband, and it'll take you 22 minutes just to get anything loaded up. So, right. no, that's not true. But broadband now is the same as water, sewer, and electricity. What can the county do to guide the county, reasonable council, development? Council's already done a lot of things about controlling growth on private roads. They've ratcheted down the restrictions. They have done a number of things to do that. There's also now a, a push to review stormwater. Stormwater, as we talked earlier, was designed for one thing, one level of rain, that's increased, so we're looking at that. I can promise you that council is dealing with stormwater and land use issues every day. And it's not like they weren't thinking about this a long time ago, but as you know, some parts of the county are zoned. And to become zoned in Anderson County, a petition from citizens has to be originated, and then it goes for a vote, and they vote up or down on whether they want to be zoned. And so, parts of the county are zoned, some parts aren't zoned. And That's, you and I remember back far enough where that was an issue where you're not going to zone me no matter what. You're not going to zone me no matter what. You're going to vote for anything as long as you didn't zone. Look, when we... they tried to get countywide zoning through for the last 30 years in some way. Well, when I was here the first time, then we first got the first land use regulations, you thought we had introduced communism to Anderson County. Now people say, I'm go well, thank goodness we at least got land use regulations. But now some areas want zoning now, and some still don't want zoning. This is a large county. It's a diverse county. What people want in one part of the county may be diametrically opposed to what they want in an agricultural area of the county. So but it's a people, challenge. As the population changes and people move here, most people are moving here from places where things are zoned for housing, for residential, and they don't want to be put into places where they're going to be potentially next to a 
you know, something they're not. Well, there's always been a strange karma. The people usually who who who've cursed about zoning, then some the junkyard moves in next door, and they say, "What are you going to do about it?" Right. Uh, there's a lot of confusion in the community about redistricting that's coming up. Um, how does it work on a county level? How does it work on a state level? Who's redrawing those lines? On the state level, the state draws those lines for the Senate and the House. Federal people have their own people drawing their lines, but uh, they not, they're not drawing their lines. It's based on population. And then we, and we still haven't received the definitive number, but we're probably may, may have it today on what we can do. And then we work to draw those lines. So, and it's based really on where population is, where people move to and where they're not. And there's criteria that you have to follow. You just can't say, well, I think I want that over there. Well, you just can't do that. So it's very specific. And how, how quickly could it be drawn in time for the 22 elections? Well, it, has it, to be. it has to be. Bonafide has to be. That's not an option. But remember, they had trouble with the census, which is delaying everything. So we won't know how much it will affect county council until you get the final well, we, I can count. Uh, Councilman Davis in the Powdersville area, his district is growing so fast that we know geographically that will shrink up. And what will it do with house lines? We, we know that's going to have some impact on that. It's going to affect Senate lines. I mean, just looking at from a statewide basis, below Columbia and above Charleston, that place is destitute of population. You're going to have Senate districts down there that are going to be multi-multi-county. Up here, you've got a lot of growth, so what are you going to do? And, and you know, it's all done scientifically and all of that stuff. Yeah, and sometimes if you're the number one guy, you <laughs> might get a little more. There's a lot of scientists you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another issue um, moving in the last part of the year is An Anderson County's partnership with AIM to distribute funds for those being evicted. Uh, now the moratorium over there getting slammed requests for help. They've already given out two million, have another four million. What's the latest you've heard on the demand is like almost overwhelming. I think it's about two and a half million. As a matter of fact, we have so many people apply. If you think of a straw, we couldn't get all of the water in the straw. I understand they're replying and calling, trying to do both versions. And yeah, and so a temporary slowdown so we could take care of the people already in the pipeline. But the money's going out. It's good for the people, it's good for the landlords, it's good for the local economy. It comes from a federal program. I think they're doing a remarkable job, in addition to doing all the other remarkable things they do. So we're very pleased with it. And I know some people say, well, I didn't get my thing right away. All right, in less than two weeks, boxes will be unpacked, and in less than 30 days, the Anderson County Christmas tree will be a light on the square. Yes. The unofficial lighting, lighting is for November 20th. That's for Thanksgiving week. Yep. That's per county tradition. Yep. And the official tree light, December 3rd. And what I'm very excited about is a special guest appearance by the Pelzer Light people. I think that's going to be awesome. How often are they going to be coming down? For I wish they'd come every day, but they've, but, got their own. but they've got their own thing and they've got their own following. I'm just glad they're giving we'll us a little bit. The Pelzer Light people Absolutely. Are here. And the tree will be over 41 feet. Is that still the plan? So that means that the current pace in about nine years will surpass in New York City's Rockefeller Plaza tree. That's the goal. If you and I are still here. Yes. When will the county begin playing Christmas music from the clock tower? Probably right after Thanksgiving. And, then and I, we might do it before Thanksgiving. I think it would be home. nice, you know, crank it up that Thursday. And the families that are home for Thanksgiving. Yes. And then finally, uh, the, the actual official harbinger of, of the Christmas season, the Santa appearing in your window, um, what, that's the real bellwether. When is that going to happen? December the 1st. So that's the December 1st tradition. Yes. Santa Claus goes up.